What is up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerdcast for the next episode of Warhammer 40k Death Watch. My name is Splattercat, your resident ultra broadcaster. While we hang out for a little, so it's kind of scary and spooky in here. Oh, see, there's an enemy. I knew it was spooky for a reason. If I can get people to advance at like a decent rate, I think we'd be all right right here. Ugh, how did I know? How did I know? So the question is now, can he actually just die behind some barrels, bruh? There you go. Oh, shit. There's one on that side, too. Oh, dude. This is so lame. So can you throw these at, like, any tile? It kind of sucks that you can't throw those, like, wherever you want them to go because... I don't know. I would like to do that. It's weird how I never have my flashbang guy where I need him. So you watch that right there, and if he tries to step through your zone of control, you shoot him in the mouth repeatedly. And then everyone else stack up in this corner because it seems like a great idea. Man. At least he regenerates on the plus side. It could be worse. Ow. Hmm. Kind of an odd set of tactical choices right there, but... I'm pretty sure they could have burned a marine down right there if they had gone with like everything they had. You hear the rumor about watch station Beckris Troika? No, brother. I say it is haunted. That the spirits of the dead walk its halls. Rumors and stories, brother. Nothing more. They keep bringing up that Troika place, and I have no idea what it is or where it's supposed to be. Go ahead and duck back into here, I guess. Quack, quack. And then we'll go down this way. Maybe, like, shoot over there or something if we have to. Here. Hand on his shoulder. Follow behind him. Put your hand on my shoulder. Oh, good. They attacked the one that I would hope they would attack. I mean, that's perfectly fine because he regenerates, like, half of that damage every turn anyways. So it's not a big deal to me. Hopefully, he'll be able to finish him off on this turn, though. It's the part that I'm a little concerned about. Let's see how much damage he does right here, and if he does a lot... He should be able to kill him, I think. There we go. And so at the end of the turn, I think he gets like 8 or 9 HP back anyways. Let's go ahead and peek some of these corners while we're here. This is a really, really... As far as level design goes, this is a level where they really wanted to mess with you with corners and blindness and just like, you have to walk into, at some point during the course of this mission, you're going to walk into an ambush somewhere. And kill off a couple of these, although it is nice to see them swapping over to levels where things don't respawn and they don't just keep coming at you. Instead, creating levels where you have to be careful on the way through. And the enemy can wipe you out if you just take too many bad moves. Like, right now, we're kind of in a bit of a spot. I mean, all of our guys are at half health. That's not something to be proud of. That's pretty embarrassing, actually. I guess I could put you on Overwatch, like, right there, just in case. I don't think it's going to do anything, but... Cool. So I wanted to see he's got 157 on this turn. I'm going to see what he has at the end of the next turn. So with 157, I would say let's move him over to... Is that not a spot you can move to? There we go. Move him to there. Move him to there. Peek some of these corners. There we go. Peek him. And does he have line of sight right there? He does not. So step back behind that wall real quick. Do you not have enough for an overwatch? What do you have? Oh, you have one. Okay, that's not even worth it. Move him over on this side, maybe. Move him over to here. Maybe actually even have him leapfrog back behind this tank. This really makes me want to... Oh, he gets 12 back every turn. Okay. So there's a little green number right there, MMO style. This really makes me want to play Warhammer Quest for some reason. Like, playing this game really... I actually, I think the setting... I think I like Warhammer Fantasy better in some situations. I'm not really sure. Sometimes I really feel like 40k, and sometimes I really feel like Fantasy. And it just kind of depends what mood I'm in. 
Go ahead and pop him a couple of times. And then what I'd really like is for you to step back to there. He should be able to finish him on this side, I think. And if not, the Assault Marine will get him. There we go. Problem solved. You only have one AP left, so I'm not going to do that. But now that we know that one way is clear, what I would prefer to do is put you right there. Aim down the hallway. Get your shit done. And, I mean, I guess I could... I feel like this is an ambush right here. So I'll kill him off real quick and then I'll pull back into cover. I'm going to play a little bit more conservatively from now on because it's very clear that they've changed the way that they want you to look at the campaign now. Like the first campaign was all about flooding numbers running through everything. Whereas this campaign seems to be more about just like moving very, very carefully and making sure that you make the right propitiations and prayers and proper incense burnings before you go in. So basically we're going to be peeking a lot of corners and just generally, yeah, I had a feeling that might be what was going to happen right there. And so luckily he was the rube on that side. It wasn't my fault. And so now we step around this way. Have you move forward. Have you move forward along with you. I probably should have moved him first. Uh, let's give it a turn. I'm worried there's going to be something back up in there. Maybe not. Maybe we're completely and totally safe. It's got very space hulky all of a sudden. I don't know. Well, looks safe enough. Let's get switch delta real fast for this Promethean. Okay, so we got that fuel switch. Now we got to get to gamma. I will probably sweep this very, very carefully and go for long lines of sight here. It's concerning. Well, you step into cover. He's still got HP or whatever left. You gents. How come you have less AP this turn? Or did you already move? Definitely don't want this guy to go first in here because he can only shoot twice. So if we end up with a big line of enemies, that is annoying me. There we go. And then we'll bring him in. I should have brought him this way. This corridor, I could use some extra help. Why is there just random rotating cogs on the wall right there? Like, because why not? I'm like, well, because you, you could get your hand stuck in it. And then you end up with, like, an ultra hook hand. That'll totally suck. Nobody wants a hook hand. I mean, maybe if I lived in pirate times, I would want a hook hand, but... Did he not aggro? Oh, look at that. He didn't aggro. Okay. That means we go back to here. And step in a bit. Can he even make it in here? How big is that piece right there? Oh, he only takes up one square. Probably won't kill him on this turn, but we can definitely get back into cover. And he'll have to go, I think, two just to get at us. So he'll take a little bit of damage, but he'll probably be okay. Corner doesn't look too horrific. Uh, either way, somebody's getting shot on this turn, but what are you going to do about it? I'm hoping this is the last switch over here. That'd be great. You know, it's really sort of unfortunate that we're flipping all these switches. Because I did not even bring my Space Marine 6 foe. It is really, really... Oh, shit. That's bad, too. They did something I didn't expect them to do. I mean, they basically gave me this guy on a plate. Which means that I'll have to hope for the melee attack right here. Okay, so that worked out. I always hate relying on melee, especially with that axe. That axe is iffy to say the least. Go ahead and clear you real quick. Keep everybody else moving through here. This is definitely some corridor combat. Stop that. There we go. All better. Probably step him into that corner right there just to get eyes on. Because he's going to keep going down this way. He's going to go this way. This guy's going to split and go right. This guy's going to go through here. You get the plan, basically. Roughly. 
Nothing. Okay. He's almost regenerated back to full health, so that'll be pretty sweet. These corners all seem okay. Something around here, though. Go ahead and aim that way just in case. It's got to be an active. I think it's got to be one of the passive guards. Nothing there. Go ahead and flick the switch, brother. In your Ultra 6 foe. Okay. So that's all taken care of. That was actually a pretty quick, pretty simple mission. We're not getting much XP anymore, though. If you're trying to get XP, you should just play that bridge mission over and over again. You sit there and farm enemies for like an hour and a half. Everybody on Overwatch for a while. Get ourselves an Infernus pistol. Cool. I assume that's just like a mini melter. It's a piece of equipment that I'm not really familiar with. Your Space Marines can't have more than 8 AP at any one time. How would they get 8 AP? It seems like they have to be having a pretty good day to get 8 AP. I may actually... I don't know. What's the accuracy on it? 71%. The accuracy is a lot better, but the range is less. I kind of like that, though. Hmm. I need you to have more accuracy because you are just killing me right now with some of that shit. Helos has 5,000. We were working him towards, I think, maybe Melta Specialization or something like that. And so, yeah, there's that. I think with Helos, then, what we would want to do is we'll take Regulus, who's got the Melta already, and we'll put him back on a Bolter. Nobody likes to use the same gun every mission anyways. you got to spice it up every now and again. And then with Helos, we'll go ahead and strap him in for the Melta gun, since now he does 10% extra damage. So that's pretty cool. That'll make sure that... You know, he's getting a good 5 to 6 damage at each shot, 5 to 7, that everybody else is not getting. Doesn't seem like much, but over the course of 100 shots, that's a lot of extra damage. So, in gear lupus, I doubt he has enough for anything. We might be able to slap some war gear on him or something, but, I mean, pretty sure that works on Melta guns. Probably give him the refractor, I guess. I don't know. Let him dodge a little bit better since we're going to be sending him first. And then with this guy, what if I took Fraggies off you? And that gives 15. I'm pretty sure this counts as a laser weapon. Like, I'm almost positive it counts as a laser weapon. Give him a little bit more health. Regulus. We can get you a targeting link after the next mission, which will be good for every now and again. We have one of those really pivotal turns where I need somebody to hit. Magnus, you're at 5k. Let's go ahead and bring your HP up slightly to be in alignment with everybody else's. So that leaves us more or less with everybody taken care of. Let's jump back into the campaign, see if we can go to the core collection. The data cores have been unearthed and scattered. The kill team must deliver them to a transport pod before they fall into the clutches of the Xenos. Okay, well, you know how I feel about Xenos and their clutches. I don't really want them all over my b -b -b body. I don't want to give up my milkshake for any of them. So we'll keep going. I love these load screens. They're like the perfect time for me to just like whip my whistle, grab a drink. Time is short. The base is falling to ruin. The data cores must be taken to the extraction site. Ready your weapons. The Xenos are everywhere. 
Well, better to fall to ruin than to chaos, am I right? Okay, so material samples are heavy pickups. A space marine carrying one cannot use their weapon. Oh, there's a bunch of them too, ain't there? Damn. Okay. Go ahead and move people to corners. Do they all go to that one right there? Or does it get further and further out every single time we do it? If it's a simple, like, run mission, I don't know if they can spawn in from back here. I don't know if the AI is going to try and grab them or what's going to happen here, but I was just going to let the melee guy do his thing. Grab the ones that are furthest away first. All I can really do right there is hope that I'm out of range. And since that's right there, I'll probably just move him to that spot and hope for the best. Okay, so he's going to dive into cover. He's going to get boxed in as best as he can. What is the most efficient way to put these things down? I'm aiming for the neck, brother. Between the first and second vertebrae. It kills most of them in one, maybe two shells. No matter the organism. My thanks for your wisdom, brother. Let's see. I don't want to grab, like, all of them. Like, that's way too many for me to carry efficiently. However... I think two wouldn't be too bad. So I'll play this one a little bit balls to the wall, but not a lot. I'm going to have him aim over here, and if he kills something, he kills something. I'd actually really like to find out what's over on this side of the map. I don't think it's anything too nasty. Yeah, there it is. And since he has a shot from back here, we'll go ahead and give Lupus the honor. That Tyranna got killed by Lupus. It's a rough disease to have. Got Hashimoto'd. Let's see here. <laughs> go ahead and destroy that guy right there. No! Stop missing! No! All right, so we got that covered. Sometimes I find that whining makes the whole situation a bit more manageable. And when in doubt, you know, whine like a small child. Once we drop those off there, we're pretty much good though, right? I think they might respawn from that side, so we just have to set up defensive perimeters. And then we can just assign people to be runners. It's not the most glorious job, but it's also not the safest. Judging from what I saw in Saving Private Ryan, runners had really bad days a lot of the time. I need to get him somewhere where he can be helpful too. I don't much care where it is. Kind of wish he had a few more AP or something. Make this a little bit easier. You, sir, fall in behind the battle brother before you and get ready for the drop off. Man, he's up in here being a problem. He's being a problem. <laughs> Tyranids be adding him to, like, their HUDs. <laughs> <laughs> they all have like a radar in their hood. It starts pinging this guy right here. But like, mm, over there, problem. Big problem for all of us. You just do the same thing. I'm sure there's probably like some kind of achievement or award for doing this the right way. I'm actually going to have him back up against the barrels right here so nothing can get him from behind. 
Sounds good. Make him a little bit more impervious to being flanked, and I think I'd be happy. I wonder how much worse it's going to get once we drop these off. That's what I'm thinking, is that when I drop these off, shit is going to get really real. Here, step around there. Bing bong. I want you to step to there. Marine, go get the next one. And he's going to take his position right here. Once he drops his shit off, he's going to take... That takes almost everything he's got. Eh, do it. Whatever. Although I might not be able to do that on this side since... He's got short range, and I need somebody who can fire that entire field. Otherwise, yeah, there you go. Step back that way. It's going to block the Devastator from shooting, but he should be able to get him anyways. Yeah, that's what I thought. I like their little headdresses. Feels fancy to me. A general rule for Warhammer 40k is the bigger the hat, the more important the man. I'll go up that way. Actually, I think I could probably just hold it with these two. I'll probably send all three of them back this time around. Grab all three of these, and then these guys should be okay, I hope. Provided I'm able to drop those, once I pick them up, it should be fine. Probably going to make a run at us pretty soon, but what can you do? You know what? Tic Tac Marines, stay back. I hear gangster shit occurring. I heard big footsteps, and that makes me nervous. So just, like, stay back over here. And we'll go each to a side for right now. I was wondering if it would get a little bit more hectic once they started. There you go. I thought it'd probably start getting a little bit more hectic once we started dropping shit off. Oh, there's one coming from that way, too. Okay, I think I can get everybody out of cover or into cover. It'll be okay. Just bring him up to here. Now might be the time. So I had a general purpose plan, but sometimes plans don't work. That's the fun part about them being called plans and not guarantees. You, sir, continue onwards with whatever your glorious plan is for battle. You keep watching over there, and we will figure this out. So as I had thought, these are actually assault positions. Over oh, really? You're going to end right there, huh? I'm not going to kill you, but it'll definitely sting a bit. Probably could have shot once and moved him over to here and killed him on the next turn a little bit safer, but... Oh, well. Trying to get this thing done and... Or at some intelligent rate. I don't think he'll be able to help over there. He might have a shot from, like... Right there, maybe. Maybe. But he would have to go... To there, possibly. Let's try. I mean, I got nothing else going on. I already have this flank covered by one Marine, so... Ah, he didn't make it. It was one shy, unfortunately. Frag grenades. I don't assume you have an arm or anything. Nope, no arm. Didn't play baseball. Alright, then. Well, we're going to take some damage on this turn, but it's all right. It's the guy that regenerates, so not that choked up about it. Is it going to hurt? Sure. But they seem to pri I don't know what the hell that move was, but I was going to say that before he even moved. It seems like the big guys prioritize self-preservation a lot of the time, too. Like they duck back into cover a lot.
How did he get all of his health back? They regenerate, maybe? Huh. That's a hell of a thing. Cameraman likes to do spins a lot. I don't know. He's super fabulous. I'm not sure why he's always spinning whenever we zoom back in on things, but he enjoys doing it, so I let him get away with it. This is going to be the end of our episode for right now. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me at the Nerd Castle for the next episode. Oh, he's right there. There's two of them. Okay. It's problematic. Still don't care, but problematic. Could be better. Could be worse. Either way, I'll see you on the next episode. Hi-do, everybody.